taking a look at the possible closure of Glory Mobile Home and RV Park, which provides affordable housing for some of East Palo Alto's lowest income residents. Um, so Sue, why don't you tell us what's going on over there? Okay, well there's this long-term mobile home park in East Palo Alto on the, on the west side ne next to San Francisco Creek. And um, it's probably been there at least since the 60s, if not earlier, but it's been slowly getting closed down, according to the people that live there. Uh, more and more mobile home units are not being occupied or spaces are being left vacant and the owners were not. Uh, Is it vacant there. because there's not a need for it? Or no, I mean, why, it, I, appear, okay. it appears that they're just not being rented out. So what kicked in was um, there's a city ordinance that basically if you have more than 15% for mobile home, Parks, if you have more than 15% vacancy, then it's considered a change of use, and you have to, the property owner has to put in a, uh, you know, formal paperwork to tell the city that they intend to close them, that they are going to have a change of use for the park. And that kicks in something that's called a conversion um, impact report or plan. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically because the state law, you can't just kick people out you know, the state really thinks of mobile home parks as being a very important part of the housing mix. And so you basically have to come up with a plan for mitigating or giving people remuneration for the homes, which they own on the property that you own. Mm -hmm. and, and other things like, you know, like relocation expenses and that type of thing. That's a good question. So can you tell us a little about who lives at Glory and who owns Glory? Who, who okay. are the players in this? Okay. The uh, Glory is owned by a group of investors. They're called Maystar uh, or Woodland Glory LLC. And they are down in, um, uh, let me see, I think it's, uh, it's um, Morgan Hill. Mm -hmm. So they're down there. But um, the people that are up here are basically mostly seniors. Uh, there are, I believe, 12 full-time full occupants uh, or 12 full-time units that are, are occupied. And then there's two that are part-time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those people come and go, but they, they uh, pay for their spaces there. So it's not really a family type place. It's more of like a one person, like a senior. Yeah, the, there senior are a retired. lot of veterans. There are, there's teachers or retired teachers, veterans, um, uh, people, in, tradesmen, so people who are like in welding and electricians, mostly. Mm -hmm. There are some families as well, though I didn't meet any there. And have they been, have most of them been there for a while? Some have been there 30 years or more, so, you know, probably since, almost since the park's opening. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, person, the, the person I met that had been there the least amount of time had been there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I know they pay an incredibly low rent. What's the average rent there? Uh, they probably pay, I'd say about 280 some odd dollars up to about 300, 400. That's for the space. Their, their mobile homes themselves, most of them, they own. Mm -hmm. What they don't own, uh, they would have to pay rent to whoever the space owner okay. is, or the, the unit owner is. It struck me, because when we, when we talk about Buena Vista here in Palo Alto, we think of a pretty dense area with like close to 400 people. Here there's only 12, and you used the words ghost town to describe the mobile home park in yeah. this case. <laughs> Can you just tell us a little about what you see when you when you go there? Like, okay. Like yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a, it's supposed to have about 29 sp uh, spaces available, mm -hmm. and so when you go there, you see you know some shrubs, and you see um, y you'll just see some weeds, and uh, there are a number of uh, mostly the RVs are kind of you know covered with moss. They are uh, not all of them. The occupied ones are not, but there are a lot that are not occupied. Some are boarded up. You know, a lot of the facilities that you would use. Um, I wouldn't say the showers necessarily, but some of the outbuildings are boarded, boarded up. Um, some have uh, signs pasted on them that say that they can't be occupied. So, yeah, it, it's kind of a desolate place. With um, It's clean. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of trash or anything like that around. But um, it's not a lively spot. Mm -hmm. And is there any kind of like supporting infrastructure, like a, like a community spot or like... There's, there's basically, I believe, bathrooms water and showers. Water fountain. Didn't see anything like that. Okay. And I'm not even sure of what kind of shape the showers, and I didn't go in there to see, but shape the showers and restrooms would be in. 
Uh, but it's it's just it's it's a place that appears to be to be waning for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's because the owners are not taking making new spots available for new tenants. Well, they're to not come making in. new spots available, and there isn't the upgrades that would be necessary. This is this is another thing. And just like when we talk about Buena Vista Mobile Home Park, which is in Palo Alto, right? Um, the bathrooms and so on and so forth there were pretty run down, and the infrastructure was run down because you have to. Remember that these people, these places went in what 50, 60 years ago, and so um, over time they've gotten worn down and they haven't really been, you know, kept up. So, for instance, the electrician who worked there said, you know, these things are like wired for 20 amps, and we we need to basically mm -hmm. uh, upgrade the whole thing if you're going to really make it a full blown. And weren't you saying that the uh, park um, someone had said that the new RVs couldn't fit in the space that was there? I don't. Yeah, that was something that yeah. was uh, mentioned, I believe, by Margaret Nanda, who was uh, one of the, okay. um, who's the attorney for uh, for the owners. So what? So we know it's like a ghost town. So what's going on? What's the timeline? Do you know what the owners plan on doing with the property? Where the tenants yeah. are going to have to move to? Or well, there's there's sort of two threads in this. One is that the um, owners have not said what they're going to do with the property. They haven't specified other than that they are now required by the city to put in this uh, formal conversion plan. I don't even know if they have to say what they want to do. They just mm -hmm. have to say if they're going to shut it down, what are they going to do to mm -hmm. help out the, the residents. Uh, the other aspect of this is that there are that the area is zoned for it's it's one point zero seven acres okay. and it's zoned for um, a medium residential medium density residential. So that means they can put in 12 to 22 units. And, and right down the road, um, not quite next door, but pretty close, there was a 44 space mobile home park mm -hmm. that um, was converted by another organization, um, I think around 2002, and that became condominiums. As okay. far as I know, those are not low income. So I think people are speculating that it is going to probably be condos or apartments or something of that nature. I mean, that seems to be the national trend. And that was the original plan for Buena Vista as well before it was publicly purchased to turn it into like a high-rise condos. And just guess, kind of just goes to show like with, this, with the property values, what they are, it, it would take a lot for an owner of like a mobile home park to decide to invest in upgrading infrastructure of like a right. rundown mobile home park as opposed to converting into some kind of a complex that could generate like a ridiculous amount of revenue given the yeah. values that they are. Yeah, well, one of the one of the tenants there told me that you know he doesn't see, he didn't see that it was going to be worth it for anybody to keep it as a mobile home park, mm -hmm. and he said you know with what they're going to pay us off that'll basically be the equivalent of you know what they would sell one of one of their units for. So they they stand to make a pretty good profit from his perspective. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that they were told, uh, I think it was last November. Uh, the residents had a meeting with uh, some of the people, the representatives mm -hmm. for the property owners, and they were told that they did plan to close down the park, and they expected that they would probably have to vacate by January 2020. Now, it seems, I mean, considering that there's a need for affordable housing, mm -hmm. it seems like I haven't heard much about this until you reported on it, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to Buena Vista when there was like this huge... Uh, public outcry. So w what's the difference between the two mobile home parks? Why is no one really protesting what's going to happen there? Well, I think first of all, a lot of people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. They may not even know that it exists. Mm -hmm. um, this, the topic of, of glory came up back when the city of East Palo Alto was looking at, or cons the city council was considering opening a temporary um, uh, safe parking uh, program mm. for basically for RV dwellers who were living on the streets and um, so somebody did mention at the time that this park existed with lots of spaces I don't know if anybody ever really looked into it don't really know how that played out but basically I think the fact that you only have 12 units occupied um, mostly by seniors at this point it's hard to say whether or not there will be pushback mm. um, from what I've heard from an attorney for the uh, legal aid of uh, San Mateo County who is representing some of them to try to get some of their, make sure they get adequate compensation. It's hard to say what they will do at this point, how much they might fight. 
But in terms of uh, Buena Vista, you have families. You've got a lot of kids who are in the school district in Palo Alto. They have a lot of incentive to want to, mm-hmm. you know, they stay here because they want to have their children have a good education in Palo Alto. Uh, so I think, and the fact that the sheer numbers, there's more than 100 units, about 400 yeah, people. I feel like the scale, right? the scale is different, and also the politics are different. I feel yeah. like uh, when the Buena Vista thing was happening, you had people around the neighborhood outside of Buena Vista, like friends of Buena Vista, who kind of led the charge and kind of encouraged Buena Vista people to get organized and create their own residence organization, things like that. You had Winter Dellenbach, and you had other people from Barron Park. The, the county got on board largely because of all that lobbying, and we don't see that kind of um, political involvement from neighbors of the Glory Mobile Park. Well, they're not even, I mean, there's hardly any neighbors there. You that's know, they're just thing. kind of isolated. That's they're another just... thing. Buena Vista is like in an area that's, it's not really visible when you go up El Camino, but it is like very close to neighborhoods, close to the center of town, pretty much. Right. Yeah, and there are people on the other side of it. You know, there's a neighborhood right to the back of them. And in this case, there really isn't. You know, you've just kind of got them stuck out in the middle of nowhere, and it's kind of hard to find. Uh, the other aspect of this is that somebody mentioned to me is that there are so many projects in the pipeline in East Palo Alto right now, bigger fish, so to speak, that uh, it may not, they just may not be rising to the top of anybody's attention because there's so many really large-scale projects, uh, you know, in the pipeline. And yet, ironically, as this is happening, both East Palo Alto and Palo Alto are considering using city land to kind of house RVs, right. which just, just sort of kind of goes to show that this is kind of a type of development that the free market has pretty much forsaked now. Yeah. So yeah. the public agencies have to step in and provide the kind of services that they were once there. Yeah. And, and Palo Alto is still just kind of in the early phases of talking about it, but East Palo Alto is really taking the lead on it. As right. Previously I mean, reported. East Palo Alto really, you know, really is the leader in terms of trying to get people into some sort of safe ha- safe housing type of situation where they're out of their RVs eventually, um, get them connected with services, get them out of the neighborhoods if they're living in their RVs. Um, but, the, you know, whether or not this will be a revolving door, you know, if there, as more people become displaced, will there be just those people replacing essentially the, the other RVs that have other RV dwellers who have ended up finding house, you know, more permanent housing. Mm-hmm. So there was a, a person actually out, I believe, near Bay Road who was talking, who had proposed that the city could establish a permanent RV park on his property. But the problems were, the, you know, there was just so much infrastructure issues there. At least you have some foundation over in, uh, in the Glory Mobile Home Park that possibly could be utilized. I don't know if the city would look at something like that. I'm sure that that will be part of the discussion in the future. Okay. Um, oh, I want to ask you, you said that the property is embroiled in some oh, yeah. lawsuits. <laughs> Does that um, pertain to anything that might happen to it in the future, or what are the lawsuits Well, about? there's probably, there have been probably, there's so much paper flying around. There's mm-hmm. probably about a dozen pieces of, uh, a dozen lawsuits at this, at this point or at one point in time. You had a, uh, there, there's a uh, Palo Alto investment group, Vita Capital uh, Group, that basically um, they own, uh, they purchased some of these different units, different, uh, not just the RVs, but mobile homes that were there. And they, uh, they want something back for, you know, for their investment. They, they want to, there, there's been issues about ownership, there's issues about whether or not they can keep the RVs there whether they really even had contracts with the uh, property owners. Uh, there were just all kinds of problems there. There was a fight with, um, against the Rent Stabilization Board for their decisions regarding rent increases on, mm. at the units. And then there's just this massive fight between, you know, there even were some fights between a prior property owner uh, who owned the property and the people who have purchased it now as to whether or not there was, um, it was sold properly if everybody signed off on it. It was just, a, it's just a huge mess. So who knows how long it will take. It may be, you know, that, that they'll shut it down in January uh, of this coming year, or it may take them a few years, mm-hmm. and we just don't know where it's going to go. So is it fair to say that the residents, I mean, you used the words muted outrage in the story, yeah. or yeah. at least the subhead, which is yeah. not the kind of, the most outrageous outrage, we could say. Yeah. It sounds like they're pretty resigned to kind of just getting bought out or getting some relocation assistance. 
I think uh, or, so, or something like that. Is, is that is that accurate? Is, are, they, are they pretty much kind of? I, to I think so. I mean, I, I think that because this whole thing is in process oh, and yes. there's a possibility that they might get some money, they're they're being very quiet. They're very tight-lipped about how they feel. Um, some people have said, you know, I, I, while I was there talking to someone, she called a neighbor, and then that neighbor said, be, I could hear her on the phone. She was saying to her, "Be careful what, who who you talk to, what you talk about." And then you don't want to basically set yourself up so that you'll make people angry and then you won't get your, your money. And so I think that they are pretty much resigned that it's going to close, how concerned they are. You know, I mean, if they were, it was one person on the back of an envelope basically said that they were given a preliminary um, formula for what, what their remuneration would be. And he said he could get, and they could get anywhere from $70,000 to $129,000. Which seems like a nice chunk of change. Wow, that does seem like a lot. But you have to consider what can you buy with that and where can you go? You're not going to be here for that. You're not going to get an apartment for that here, you know, to, or a, a condo here for that. So um, there are many other things they could get up to like 24 months of um, the developer would pay for 24 months over what their current rate of rental is. Mm -hmm. so, they cover like the delta, yeah. the, the, the increase. Mm -hmm. Right, and 48, uh, I think it's 48 months if you're disabled or elderly. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that once that money runs out, you're still stuck with the enormous rental payments here, right? $3,000 a month. And so what's the long-term effect going to be for these people? Mm -hmm. That's a big question. How many um, mobile home parks um, are still around in East Palo Alto? Is this the last one? There's one other that I know of. I don't think there are any mm -hmm. others. Uh, okay. There's the Palo, I think it's Palo Mobile Estates. And okay. um, that's on the east side. And I think there's like 100 some odd spaces there. And that one is, I believe, the last one. Is there anything else that we didn't cover? I don't think so. I think we've okay. covered pretty much all. I mean, you know, this is a, just something that's just beginning, so we don't really know exactly where it's going yeah. to go at this point. I'm sure there'll be much more discussion. How did you hear about the story? I mean, what was going um, on over there? There was actually, um, uh, well, first of all, I kind of heard inklings in the neighborhood. People have mentioned okay. it, and then it showed up on a list of projects that the city had, and uh, they had 27 projects, you know, commercial projects, not all of them related to uh, residentials, most, most of it just commercial development. And that one was on the list. And I was just going to mention that Palo Alto, the program that I mentioned earlier that the mm -hmm. city is exploring, I think its policy and services committee, the city council's policy and services committee, is going to have its first discussion of this next month. So stay tuned for that. It should be interesting. So they'll be discussing where the, whether they're going to have a... Creating like safe parking type things, like dedicating city land to letting RVs park overnight. You see, this is another issue, though. I mean, it's a, a whole side topic, but when you talk about safe parking, it doesn't really give anybody a home. Oh, they're of still not. in their RV, no, of course they're not. still being moved off, and they're still it's, being it's, moved it's off. It's triage, it's basically yeah. triage, so yeah. And it's they a, can't even park it there 24-7, they've got to move them somewhere yeah. else during yeah, the day. Definitely not a substitute, but I do think as more mobile homes close down, and as you know, cities adopt kind of bans on overnight parking, like Mountain View was considering, I'm not sure what that is there is a greater demand for this kind of thing. So I think it's all kind of related, yeah. even though, as you said, it's definitely not a substitute for having a permanent location. Mm -hmm. But it would be very interesting to see whether or not they, there is a revitalization in some way for mobile home parks rather than just temporary places that have cities. And, and, and it may not be that there'll be private property owners doing it, but it, you know, it's hard to say whether or not that's going to be uh, something that is lucrative. But on the other hand, I just read a report, a couple of uh, business reports recently that's, that are talking about investments in mobile home parks being good. Mm -hmm. And that the, there is so much competition basically with apartments that, it, you know, there's very little infrastructure you have to deal with. You don't have to build a building to put people in. They've got their own units. And then you can just keep raising the rent. The issue is in the case of Glory Mobile Home Park is that there's rent control there. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason why you see that the rents are so low. Yeah, you know? 200, 400. Well, we've seen plenty of proposals for luxury housing in surrounding cities. We haven't seen any for new mobile home parks. No. So <laughs> Maybe not here, if, for sure. If, if there's one thing we learned from Buena Vista is to save a mobile park, city, county, have to step in with serious infusion of public funds because it seems like the market is kind of leaving that kind of development behind. Yeah, I, I think overall that we're going to see this certainly with... Um, 
with low income housing in general. Uh, whether or not there's an incentive, you can't really hold somebody's, you know, a developer's feet to the fire and make them build a whole lot of affordable housing or low income housing. And that's why you're seeing projects like East Palo Alto has a project down on Week Street that they're going to be building themselves, you know, that, and so there, it may just be that the, the municipalities will have to step up and do it themselves. Hmm. All right. Well, that wraps up another edition of Behind the Headlines. Thanks for watching. Stay up to date with Palo Alto News at paloaltoonline.com or follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. <laughs>